Since an Ionic app or any other hybrid application that uses a web view, uh, since it is like a normal website that is just built to look and feel like a native application, it has the same vulnerabilities or at least most of the same vulnerabilities that a typical website would have. That means that it is possible to execute an XSS attack on an Ionic or other hybrid applications. But in the context of a hybrid application, there is more to worry about if an attack like that is executed. The goal of an XSS attack is basically to be able to run whatever arbitrary code the attacker wants in your application. Now, since the hybrid approach works by creating a native bridge between the web view and native APIs, what that means is that we can access native APIs through JavaScript. Now, if our application can access those native APIs through JavaScript, so could an attacker who has managed to inject JavaScript into your application. So that creates this kind of unique uh, attack for hybrid applications where the native APIs can be accessed through JavaScript code and thus by an XSS attack. So this isn't necessarily a, a huge problem with hybrid apps or anything like that. Uh, any situation where an attacker can run arbitrary code is a pretty bad situation. Uh, this is just something to be aware of and to take steps against uh, if you can. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at a little example that I've coded up. I actually have a blog post on this that goes into more detail. I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview here. Uh, but we're going to look at an example of how with just a default Ionic application with capacitor installed, uh, no other changes to it at all. Uh, if we can inject some JavaScript into that application through an XSS attack, which I'll demonstrate, uh, we can access all of the default capacitor APIs. And in this example, I've set up something that would allow an attacker to track the user's location with the geolocation API, but the same principles apply to any API that your application could access. Now, another thing worth mentioning is that we'll be using capacitor here. The same concept would apply to Cordova or any way that some JavaScript interface is implemented to the native functionality. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is that I mentioned the attacker's JavaScript would have access to any native APIs that your application has access to. So by default, Capacitor uh, will provide you with access to all of their default native APIs, so things like uh, camera, contacts, uh, battery, device information. I think there's about like 15 or so native APIs. Uh, an important thing to note on that front is that in the next version of Capacitor, I believe that you will need to install each uh, native API individually. So that could help mitigate against uh, the severity of an attack like this. Okay, so let's get into the actual code now and have a look at what's going on. And then we'll talk a little bit more about some steps you might take uh, to help mitigate against an attack like this. Okay, so I have the basic app up on screen now. And this is something I've covered quite extensively in a previous video and blog post, uh, the idea of how we might go about executing an XSS attack and the different types of XSS attacks that exist. So what we're looking at here is one particular way that you could have an attacker inject arbitrary code into your application uh, through the setting the inner HTML property. I'm not gonna recover this in detail here. Uh, I'd recommend you go check out the blog post for that. But the basic idea is that we are, uh, well, we have an image in our template, or rather we have a section here where we're going to inject an image and we are having some non-sanitized data come in and we are just setting that on the inner HTML property. The problem with that is that when we set things on the inner HTML property, that is going to uh, execute the uh, HTML and JavaScript, you know, as if it were our own uh, code that we've added to the application. So what an attacker could do here, for example, is set up an image tag, have the source linked to an image that doesn't exist, so it's going to trigger an error. And then on error, there is just some JavaScript code in here that will get executed. So anytime a user of the application views this image, they or tries to load the image, 
uh, they are going to have this JavaScript executed on their device. So just so we can see this a bit better, this is just one long string of uh, uh, some JavaScript code here, but I'm just gonna expand that out just so we can see what is going on a little bit better. So what we have here basically is just a set interval function. It's going to run every 10 seconds and every 10 seconds, it's going to reference this capacitor global object uh, to call the get current position method of the geolocation API. It's going to get that position and then it's just going to log that position out to the console. Uh, if this were a real attack, uh, the attacker could then send that position off to some server they control so they can actually see these values rather than just have them logging out to the user's console. Uh, I do also uh, describe how something like that would work in that previous post that I mentioned. So notice here that we don't, we don't even have the capacitor geolocation API set up. We're not importing it. We're not injecting it through the constructor or anything like that. Uh, when capacitor sets up this JavaScript bridge to the native APIs, this global capacitor object is created. So this can just be referenced at any level in your application, just like the window object, uh, we can just call capacitor.plugins, and it's going to list every plugin that we have access to through capacitor. And thus the attacker could use capacitor.plugins to access anything that is installed in your application. So now that we have this code, I'm going to run this on my device and we are going to uh, see this actually happening. Okay, so I've just got this open in Android Studio now. I'm going to run this on my Google Pixel. Okay, so I have my uh, Android device plugged in to my computer with USB debugging enabled. Uh, I'm just going to go to uh, inspect in Chrome. Apparently guest windows uh, incognito, I guess. Uh, let me just open up another browser window and we'll go back into that. Okay, so I just have Chrome inspect uh, open here. If you're not sure how to do this, you can just go to Chrome uh, colon forward slash forward slash inspect in your Chrome browser. And if you have something connected by USB with USB debugging enabled, that is going to allow you to inspect that through the browser here, just like normal dev tools. Uh, you can see we have the Ionic app here. So I'm going to inspect that and we will pull up the console for that. And you can see here as this has already been running in the background, we have all these uh, hacked position logs being logged out and these are appearing on the console every 10 seconds. And this is the literal coordinates of where I am currently located. And this would have happened uh, without you know, my even knowing it's happening. As you can see on screen here, this broken image is really the only telltale sign that something is amiss. This image tried to load and it failed, so it triggered that on error uh, handler, which triggered our JavaScript code that runs the set interval, which watches our position through the geolocation API. Now, I'm not actually going to expand this to see the coordinates because, you know, I trust most of the people who watch my YouTube channel, but I don't want the entire world knowing my exact coordinates. So, uh, but this does give you a pretty good uh, sense of the severity that an attack like this could have. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. Uh, this XSS attack could access any, currently any default native API because we don't have any custom plugins installed. But if we did have other plugins installed that did other things, the attacker would also have access to that as well. So I'll leave most of the discussion for how to mitigate against this uh, to the blog post that I already have up. Um, so you can go check out that and also the one on XSS attacks in general and how to prevent those. But uh, basically the two major things we can do is obviously prevent XSS attacks. That is the main thing uh, we want to do. There is quite a lot to know about XSS attacks and how to stop them. Uh, but basically we want to do everything we can to stop people from being able to execute uh, arbitrary code in our application. In this specific example, uh, it could have been stopped either by not setting the inner HTML property the way that we did. Uh, Angular does have some built-in uh, XSS protection. So if we do things the correct way in Angular, uh, it's just gonna automatically strip out any unsafe values for us or if we do for whatever reason need to set something uh, in a dangerous way, we need to make sure that we are manually sanitizing the values ourselves uh, to make sure 
that no malicious code is gonna get in that could be executed in the browser. And the second major thing is a sort of defense in depth strategy where you want kind of multiple layers going on here in case something fails, you want you know, something else there to sort of back you up a bit. And in this case, what we could do is just make sure that we don't have any plugins that we aren't using or that our application doesn't need. Uh, obviously this is a bit hard in the case of these default APIs since they are just available by default. Hopefully in the next version of Capacitor that'll be less of a problem and we'll only need to install the specific plugins we want to use. Uh, but basically just be careful of the plugins you're using. Consider when you're installing them, what does this plugin, plugin do? What can an attacker do with it? And uh, if possible, just really limit uh, what you install in your application, uh, just so that you have enough to do what your application needs and nothing more. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.